Who else has got a question? It can be about anything. It doesn't have to be about this movie. I'm ready to put it behind me. They came for the movie. I'm you ready, have a question. I'm ready to move you have a on with life. At the top. Okay. How are you guys doing with the events that You wanted it to go there. This is what happened. And and I'll be, you guys know me. I'll be serious. This is what happened. Uh, obviously, Emmanuel Acho came on the podcast. It went left. I've, you know, I've heard criticism on both sides, and that's fair. Call Rachel, and I, I say to Rachel, I say, look, should I post clips from the podcast? Correct. Rachel, what was your answer? I said, what's your intention behind it? Like, what kind of response are you trying to generate by posting those clips? Okay. In that case, my co-host was right yesterday somebody is having a conversation with emmanuel acho this is after we've done another podcast it's like a week after this shit is over Full week yeah <laughs> and they say something about the comment that he made about you know not having any generational trauma whatever and uh he said that i that one of the co-hosts reached and that he didn't really insinuate that or anything like that so i posted the clip the end. And now, nigga, <laughs> people did what they were, what I knew yeah. that they would do if they posted the clip. And by the way, I am not in any way reveling in the fact that he's getting kicked in his nuts like that. Because if we're being honest, that's probably a net negative. When we're having conversations about forward moving progress it's always better if someone can leave feeling whole and not pulled apart and shredded apart that's a fact if it's possible however in, in this specific situation like there's a there's a lesson here absolutely there's a lesson you, 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 like you. Well, this is, and we kind of talked about this a little bit on the podcast, and this is why I have such a problem with what's, I have a, I have a lot of problems. I really had to debate whether or not I, I asked you, like, should I respond to the tweet? And the reason, if you haven't seen the tweets, Emmanuel is using my friendship, our friendship, and weaponizing it, and. Against Van and using it to further the narrative. And what's disappointing about this, and this is what I was saying that we alluded to on the podcast in our conversation after, is that this could have been such a good conversation. This could have been the conversation that he needed to have with black people. You do a you do a whole series about black people, but you never sat down and talked to black people about how they feel about it. Because what I was telling him off mic is that I don't know one black person who's okay with the what you're the way you're doing it. Nobody's questioning your intention, at least initially, but they have an issue with the method. And so I felt like at the end of the podcast, we took up responsibility that things got intense, that things went left. There's been no accountability on his end, which is what's bothering me. All he's trying to do is prove a point on Twitter, which is why I think so many people are attacking him for what he did. I don't like if you've seen the tweets, and this is what I wanted to respond to, is that he's talking to me like I'm some, or about me, like I'm a damsel in distress. Like Van silenced me and Van manipulated me into having my friend come on the podcast so he could come at him. And that's not the case. What also bothers me is this was a week ago. I have talked to Emmanuel Thursday. Ran into him Saturday and had a full conversation and also talked to him on Monday. This was put to bed. It was done. I have no idea why he decided to go on Twitter and bring all of this back up again. And now here we are with him trending on Twitter. And it seems like everybody is jumping in on it. Black Twitter's trending again yeah. because Black Twitter was coming at him. And this is not how this needed to be. It really could have been something great. And it really could have been that. And with the... and. With what's happening in Memphis right now and with the release of the video tonight, I'm sure you guys are all aware of what's going on. It's important to be intentional about the conversations that you have and the power of the conversations. Let me tell you what I mean by that. Prior to um, prior to me meeting 
Emmanuel Acho, I just had a problem intellectually intellectually with things that are said. Okay. There's uh, a way that I look at freedom and justice and how those things make people feel whole. Um, and I would challenge anyone in this room to think of a time in history when freedom was given. When someone just went, I've fucked over you for long enough. Here you go. Now. If we talk about the French Revolution, the people stormed the castle and cut the head off the king. If we're talking about the Haitian Revolution, the ha Haitian Revolution, uh, Toussaint and Bookman um, killed. Not just, they didn't just kill their slavers. They killed the black upper middle class that would have prevented them from a full revolution. They did exactly what they had to do. If you talk about this country, built on a revolution from people who they thought were oppressing them. I'm not talking about violence here. I'm not talking about actual violence. What I'm talking about is an understanding of what it takes to wrestle freedom. And anything short of that is a half measure. And that's a fact. And it doesn't matter whether or not, it just, it just is. History has rewritten stories of people that had peaceful methods and they've made it seem like those methods were non-confrontational. It's not true. It's just not. And so prior to having the conversation with him, I just thought he was a guy that thought he was going to hold hands with enough white people to end racism. And that is quaint in a way. It's like almost kind of like, you know, you know, people like that, the kids and the in high school that would wear those khaki hats and curve like that and hang around with white boys. And, you know, I used to always judge them. I'd be like, nigga, what you wearing that for? Um, but after having had the conversation with them and after all of this, I don't think I'll be honest with you. I think he's 1000% full of shit, like in every way. I think he is brilliant because he recognized the hole in the marketplace uh, um, after the death of George Floyd. And that hole in the marketplace was someone to uh, pat white people on the black when everybody in the world was. When I say white people, let me be more specific. Pat white supremacy on the back when everybody. Uh, because I don't want to individualize, we're talking about systems here, when everybody in the world was demanding answers. And I thought that there would be more substance to a conversation with him because, look, I've been on television for hundreds of hours. I've said thousands of words. There's nothing that strikes at the core of my intellectual belief that you can question me about that I can't engage that you, you can't, on. Yeah, yeah. Nothing. Yeah. Well, it's never been challenged, not publicly at least. I, I can't speak to any private conversations as he's that he's had. But that's why this could have been so great. It's never been challenged publicly. He's never been questioned. He's never had to face the conversations that he's had. He can always speak to it in the way, in the exact way that he was speaking to us. You get more bees with honey than you do with vinegar. And some people will take that. That wasn't the type of conversation that we were ready to have. This is what I will say, because I was there at the beginning when he started Uncomfortable Conversations. Okay. The intention at the beginning, and I know because I was talking to him, that first video, I know I don't. he wasn't trying to solve racism. He really, I don't like the way you're looking at me. He really was trying to just talk, right? What he didn't anticipate mm -hmm. is that it would take on the life that it did and people would respond that way. And then he got, I believe, he got in over his head and he was not equipped to have those type of conversations in those circles with those people. And that's why I asked him to go back to something that you were saying, right? If the goal is the same, right? If the goal is the same for freedom, to end racism, to get to a better place. The qu last question I asked him was, here we are two and a half years removed from when you started Uncomfortable Conversations. Have things been better? Have things gotten better? How have your conversations helped? And if they haven't, then either they need to stop or you need to restructure how you're having these conversations. That's what I wanted him to see. Like, can we talk about that? If your heart is pure, if that is really your intention, if that's really your goal and you're not accomplishing it, 
well, we got to start over. But you don't think that that's his goal, which is what you're saying. And I, because I know where the, what the original idea was, how do you get back to there? And I think we're so far removed from it. I don't know if we ever can. I want to make it a bigger conversation now so we can like stop harping on one person. But I just can't get this image out of my head. It's 2020. He's seen everything that's going on. He's in his fucking home gym. He's like, fuck this shit. That's not what happened. <laughs> I got something for these motherfuckers. Ain't nobody ever tried this shit before. I'm the man. Emmanuel, what are you doing? I'm on 400 push-ups, dog. I'm going to talk to these motherfuckers. What color should the background be? Let's take everything away. Let's How are you going to be like, I don't want to harp on one person and then do this whole thing? Let's make it white. <laughs> Drop me into the middle. Uncomfortable conversations with a black man. Should we call it, should we say nigger? Is that too much? <laughs> <laughs>